hello from gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and it's definitely autumn time and this year I'm doing a different kind of technique with the garden so I made a video a little while ago whereby I cut back some of the plants in the garden to help it stay looking good right through into the winter now this year I'm adopting a different technique and it's raising everything to the ground but I have some people here that are going to help me today to do that. And before we get launched into the video, I want to introduce you first to Ishtar. Hello, um, I'm Ishtar. I am Rachel's daughter. Um, I have not been helping out too much in the garden, but I have a couple of times. You might remember we planted some um, tulip bulbs that I brought back from, uh, from Amsterdam a couple of years ago. And, um, and I did a little yoga video as well. Okay, and the third person we're going to meet today is Nina, all the way from Germany. So come on in here, Nina, and introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nina from, uh, from Germany, and I met Rachel over the website Workaway. So I stay here for a week and help her, and then I continue traveling to Ireland. <laughs> Now before we launch into the video I want to just take a few moments and talk about the collaborative growing that we're doing here on this channel and this is for Josh my son and Ishtar's brother who sadly passed away in March and it's really encouraging to see how many different people around the world are interested in growing a plant for Josh and I want to give a shout out today to two of those and the first person is David Friedman from Essex in the UK and David is growing a philodendron Xanadu which is a bit like the, um, the cheese plant, the monstrous cheese plant that I potted a little while ago and everybody knows, but it's far more exotic and interesting really. So thank you so much, David, and I look forward to, well, you're gonna see a picture of this plant at the very end of the video, and we look forward to hearing more updates from David in time. And the second person I want to mention is Randy from Maui. At least that was the name of his channel and Randy was in Hawaii but re recently moved to Seattle so I think his channel is now called Randy in Seattle but he grows a variety of orchids and contacted me recently to say he also wants to grow the Cattleya Golf Green Hair Pig for Josh which is the orchid that a lot of people are growing for him because uh, Josh's favorite animal was a pig he was quite fascinated with pigs mm. um, he absolutely loved them and uh, and he also loved green. Green was his favourite colour, so it kind of all fits together quite perfectly, I think. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, the golf green hair pig, it's an orchid. It's white and it's got a kind of fringe on it, but there's tints of green in there, so that's really nice. So thank you very much, Randy, and I'm going to link to his channel up above. I think it's on that side, it's on that side, you'll see the link up above. <laughs> Okay, girls, so I'm going to give you now some instructions on what we're going to do. And the plan here is to cut all of the perennials to the ground. And I know it's a bit early in the season for doing this and some things really still look very nice, but we're just trying to get on top of the spring work. Now, once this is done, ideally what we should then do is put a mulch, a thick layer of manure, horse manure, Nina likes horses, she knows all about that, well-rotted horse when you're on top. But that's uh, work for another day or another month. So in terms of cutting back, we're going to cut back all the perennials back. So the four things that we're not going to cut back is number one, trees. So for example, that, that there behind you, everybody knows what a tree is. Okay, so <laughs> it's got a, a thick bark and we're not going to touch them. We're also not going to touch bushes. So these are plants with woody stems, like the rhododendron here. So we're not going to cut them back. So the next category of thing we're not going to cut back is evergreen plants. So this here is an evergreen plant. 
and we can see that the leaves are quite succulent. Now, if you're not used to gardening and you're not used to plants, you might know what an evergreen plant is, which is why I'm with you when you're cutting back. So if you're not sure about something, I'll um, then come and ask me. But before you start in any border to cut back, because as we said in the last video, we should only ever cut something back when we know what it is and we know how to treat it. So we're not cutting this back because it's evergreen, is that right? That's right. Okay. Um, if we did cut it back, what would happen? Would it die? It would, well, evergreen plants keep their leaves for a very long period of time. They have difficulty regenerating them quickly. Whereas deciduous plants, which are the perennials we're cutting back, have no problem making new leaves. So you can really be quite brutal with them. Okay. And the last plant that we're not going to cut back today is plants like the penstemon. Now in Ireland we have a very mild climate, not like in Germany, and there are some plants that we can get away with leaving in the ground. But these are plants that are borderline tender. So the problem is if we cut them back now then they have no protection over the winter. So we need to leave them with all their leaves on now and in spring after danger of frost has passed, we'll cut them back. And in fact, I have a video on specific penstemon care, which I'm going to link to up above. Do you like the flowers? I do, they're very pretty. They're very, very pretty. I think I saw um, uh, a butterfly when we were in Crete with a, a snout that would fit perfectly down, uh, down the, those little things there. Okay, Nina, so this plant is a horseradish mm -hmm. and it's a variegated one with nice creamy leaves. But that doesn't matter because we're just going to cut it to the ground. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it's been a bad year for it and it's full of slug marks, but never mind. So what we're just going to do is go in here as close to the base as possible and just cut it. Mm -hmm. and we don't have to be afraid. And we're just going to put the stuff here in a pile. So join in whenever you're ready. many because we don't have a balcony um, but we do have a big south facing window mm -hmm. so we have like um, a fig tree in a pot <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that, um, that is starting to get far too big for the sitting room and uh, we also have like some tomatoes and uh, we grew carrots little baby carrots at one stage as well and they were okay. really tasty and we have a few strawberry plants that we actually took from the garden here from like a, a border down there and uh, and put into pots that live beside our window and we eat like these teeny tiny little strawberries off them every day like yeah <laughs> they were josh's strawberry friends. yeah yeah they were josh's he used to come out and um relish in the, the strawberries in the mornings and what about your air plant oh um yeah i have an air plant as well um josh in transition year he was selling air plants you might have seen them in the bathroom they're um little plants that don't have um roots they don't grow in soil so they're just uh, mm -hmm. yeah you, mm -hmm. you know the ones um so i have one of those that i bought from josh during his mini company project um and he somehow managed to sell me a little um glass jar to, for it to go in um for like five euro or something and it was just an old glass <laughs> jar and somehow somehow he tricked me into buying it um but yeah i have that in the window as well <laughs> we're finished oh, yeah. yay <laughs> um, we couldn't bear to cut down this one because it was so pretty it's a uh, sanguisorba pink brushes we thought we'd leave it up for now because it's uh too pretty to cut away okay all right, so... On to the next border. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, girls. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>